Just the back and forth a minute. Oh. Oh. There's a big rock. Here comes Romero. Oh. What a pull counter. That What's good, everybody? Romero17 here. We're going to be bringing a kind of new, different twist on things. So, I'm going to be going with something called What If, right? And what it's going to be is, depending on who my opponent chooses on ranked championships, or if we can't go on ranked, we're going quick fight, if we're looking for a specific type of matchup, we're going to go with a fighter that has a loss to the fighter that they're choosing. And then we're going to go with What If So-and-So Fighter won. So, so we're gonna, believe it or not, before they squared off against each other in UFC 289, Oliveira versus Darush, Oliveira was the underdog heading into this bout. And part of that came from the long win streak that Benio Darush is on. He's been a perennial contender in the lightweight division, has been, you know, top 10, top 15 for quite some time. Obviously, he's lost back-to-back -back fights in the first time in a long time game, finished by Armin Sarukin as well. And I think his time in the division is done. So I saw my opponent have chose Charles Oliveira. I'm like... Perfect. We're going to go with Benil Darush and see if we can avenge this loss. Benil was coming off of a big win against Mateus Gamera, whereas Oliver was coming off of his loss to uh, Islam Makashev. But his last two fights were his most impressive victories. Tony Ferguson before, uh, I believe Charles Oliver had beaten him prior. Then uh, Benil beat him <laughs> a little bit worse. And then he had beaten Mateus Gamera, who he was the underdog against. And Oliver was facing a situation where if he had lost to Benil Darush, it would have been his first first pair of consecutive losses in a long time. So, ran into Charles Oliveira. Chose Benil Dadouche. Hopefully, you guys enjoy this fight. Enjoy. All right. Let's see if we can avenge a loss for Mr. Benil Dadouche. So, when this bout was announced, I had already spoken about um, the odds and whatnot on Twitter. And I didn't, I wasn't too sure. I understood why. But I thought it was going to be relatively dead even. Because, yes, I know. I understand. Islam Makhachev submitted Charles Oliveira, right? He submitted him after a very competitive first round. I think a lot of people uh, overlooked the fact that that first round was pretty competitive. And it came down to some small mistakes there. But that one knockdown that Islam Makhachev got, and he followed up when Oliveira was hurt. A lot of uh, the opponents of Oliveira, when they stun Oliveira, a good portion of them, they don't follow up because they're so worried about his grappling. Islam Akashev said, fuck that. I'm just a <laughs> grappler, or if not better. And he ended up submitting him. But I figured Benil had the skill set on the ground to offset Oliveira a bit. And for the first portion of the fight, I believe he got the first takedown. Ended up on top, on top, controlling Oliveira decently. But Oliveira, he's so active off of his back. And not only that, he's looking to damage you when he's off his back. He's throwing strikes and whatnot. So it looked very oh this is gonna it looked very 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 like intriguing my oh I can't wait until like they make adjustments against each other, but in open stance that cross head kick has been money and that cross head kick from Charles Oliveira is what led to the fight finishing sequence in round one when he fought Benio Darush. So we're gonna try to fight smarter. Get ourselves a nice rock armbar appears. Let's go for it. For those of you who don't know, um, in the move list it says stun. Like there's certain submissions. That if you get a stun in that position, you can go for the sub. This guy knows what he's doing, so let's see who wins this race. He wins that race. Good. I tried to recover the back sitting. Failed to do so. That's fine. That's fine. But I, I was really hoping that the fight would go much longer than it did. Just because I like seeing skill. I like seeing uh, skill sets go off against each other. Some people prefer to watch a quick finish or straight up domination. I like to see the skill sets of the fighters shine. And why the fuck did you get up? Huh. You got up with Charles. Oof. Okay. But he's making that cross head kick come alive. And this by team. I think he really... <laughs> I was going to say. He was Southpaw of Oliveira. And he goes back to Southpaw. Interesting choice. Not that Oliveira hasn't shown that he's capable of fighting from an opposite stance. Especially when it comes to... Throwing them down teeth. Opponent tries to pull elbow, so we're going to keep a mental cue of that. But with Benio Darush, you know, we have very nice overhands. Very nice calf kicks. Good access to a lot of jiu-jitsu transitions. Pretty sure he should have a pretty uh, solid heel hook, if I'm not mistaken. But the good thing about Benio, because of that haymaker slash overhand, because it's at a high level, I'm going to get this double leg and take him down. It works really well in catching people in vulnerability. And you have an opponent that's uh, trying to pull. The overhand can land pretty well. It's a much stricter timing to try to pull against the overhand. 
especially at a close range. So, pretty good first round for us. Already lasted longer than the real fight. Mm, see that he fainted it and then tried to preemptively slip, but ran into a banal slobber knocker of a hook. All right, round two. Charles is, uh, my bad, bro. I, I wasn't feeling how you ran up on me and clinched me. Charles has been a motherfucker on this game because of the TBS system. In UFC 4, yeah, he had some monster subs, but there was just certain positions, especially we, we all kind of know that he, he didn't feel like he was that dude the way that he should have been. So in this game, he has a lot more love on him, especially due to the win streak that he was on. And he bounced back in a big way. Good spinning elbow. We're going to hit you with a spinning back fist. One thing I always found funny about uh, Benio Dadush is that he's the most unsuspecting uh, <laughs> unsuspecting guy that you would expect to be a top-ranked fighter. Ooh, denies that. Let's see if we can chain it. Yes, we do. Get him right back down to full guard. Let's be careful. But you look at Dadush, and you wouldn't think that this man is... Uh, you know, top 10, top 10 uh, lightweight in the world. And since 2016, he's been a top 10 lightweight. I think only one year he wasn't ranked. I think he was just outside the top 10. Maybe it could have been after his loss uh, to Alexander Hernandez. But he's been overlooked plenty. I just felt really bad for him because I'm pretty sure he was... Uh, I'm here talking. Put up an arm bar. Let's see. Okay, he fakes it. Let's initiate the struggle. Here's our advantage. Notice, I went the moment that shit hit zero. That's when I started my transition. I didn't sit there and, and, and hung out there for too long. I went for that shit the moment that his short-term stamina hit zero. So when you guys are looking to escape, that's what you got to do. And remember, I know the game's been out for about three months or so. You hold R1. That's how you initiate the struggle mechanic, that drain. And if you have a short-term stamina lead, that's how you go in and, and look for your escapes here. Nice use of the jailbreak. Yeah, but Neil's just... I felt bad for him because I'm pretty sure he was scheduled to fight Islam Makachev, right? Then he was trying to look for a fight against uh, Dustin Poirier. That didn't happen. Dustin said it wasn't an interesting fight. And, of course, some people say, oh, yeah, of course Dustin's not going to want to fight him. But when you watch... Then when you watch... Uh, <laughs> we're going to get this Darce counter. Let's go. Transition to back flap. When you watch uh, how uh, the fight went against Charles, you're like, eh, maybe it was a good thing that Dustin didn't take the fight because there, it wasn't much upside to fighting Benio. But as a, as a fan of MMA, I don't think that's how it should be. If the guy's a top-ranked fighter, you should fight other top-ranked fighters. If you're already fighting within the top five, you might as well fight the other guy in the top five, especially when you're coming off of a loss. And that's what I feel bad about for Benio. He spent all this time building up a win streak. Underdog against Mateus Gamrot. That fight, if Gamrot had won, probably would he probably would have been fighting for the title, right? Gamrot was a, I'm pretty sure Gamrot was supposed to be the backup fighter too for um was it Islam's uh last defense, right? It was against uh Bukanovsky or shit like that. Correct me if I'm wrong. Correct me if I'm wrong. But Benil got put to the wayside. Nice grappling. <laughs> thank you, thank you, sir. Oh, thank you. Oh, wow. What type of sense does that make? You're going to tell me no respect because I'm grappling you with Benio Dairush. Now I'm going to make you watch this. Look at that doesn't go as long as it used to. So I don't know what's going to be next for uh, Benio Dairush. His record was really, you know, 22 and 4 for as long as he's been fighting. I'll hold that fucking overhand. So it's, it's impressive. And then now he's 22 and 6. We're going to go attack the heel hook here because you all recall. He's attacking heel hooks against uh, Tony Ferguson. So we might as well. We got to at least try to at least lock in one sub. There we go. But I, I don't know what's next for Benil. I think I think he was hinting towards uh, retirement. Since he's, he's not fighting for a title anytime soon. I'm going to deny that transition. He's old too. He's 34. Pretty sure he's like 34, 35 or something like that. And it's about that age. That's that age where uh, shit starts to go downhill. So opportunities. Opportunities come and go. But 
We've definitely flipped the script of his uh, initial meeting against Charles Oliveira. At least we did that much. It's crazy because he shared a shared a lot of wins with uh, Makachev. Well, not a lot, but you know, two of the wins, Tiago Moises and Drew Dober. Those are two of Makachev. Makachev has those wins too. That fight against, uh, I'll say this, if you guys want to actually, ah, oh, for fuck's sake, appreciate uh, Benil Tarush, check out his fight against Carlos Diego Ferreira. That's a really, really good fight to see where his skill set's at and why people were so hype on him. Oh my gosh, I can't believe we let ourselves get reversed. Transition. Got heel hooks here. Now that transition. Attack the heel hooks once more. Alrighty. Let's initiate. Oh, he faked it. You motherfucker. See if we can sneak one in. Is he gonna win it? He ah oh, he got it. I tried to I tried to sneak that shit in. Flying knee. Damn, I couldn't slip my head. Come on, Benil. Oh, for fuck's sake. I thought I could go to this fight at least without getting rocked once. Uh-uh. Let's see. The Wrath of Benil is incoming. The Wrath of Benil is incoming, my friend. There we go. Slumped him. All right. Got the W over Charles Oliveira with a monster left hand as Benil loves to drop his foes with. Whew. That's as clean as it can get. So let me, let me know in the comment section if you guys like this uh, idea for a series. I think it's going to keep things relatively fresh on the channel. I think this was a pretty fun thing to do. Got ourselves a nice left-hand KO with Benil and avenge that loss. Romero17, I appreciate all of you. Much love and take care. Have a wonderful week.